Have you had a good start to the new year? Well, I think we could guess what most people's answer would be to this right now. I normally love the beginning of a new year. It always feels to me like the perfect time to bring change in my life, to kind of start afresh, I guess, and uh, learn from the mistakes from the last year, bring some changes to my life. But I have to admit that this year I didn't feel quite so enthusiastic. With COVID cases rising and a national lockdown announced just four days into 2021, it hasn't been a great start to the year. It feels like our lives are just being put on hold and we're just sitting here waiting for all of this to be over so that we can get back to living our lives. It's like when people say that something is as boring as watching paint dry. It's kind of funny because you never would actually paint a wall and then just sit there and wait for the paint to dry watching it. You'd, uh, of course, you'd go and find something else to do, wouldn't you? Well, it feels like we're in a situation at the moment where maybe we're just being forced to watch paint dry, just waiting and waiting and waiting with nothing to do. But in the passage we've just heard, it also talks about people waiting. And we can see what their response was. The first was a man called Simeon. He'd been waiting for the Messiah to come, for somebody that would come and save his people. And the, Ho and the Holy Spirit had already told him that he would meet this Messiah before he died. So you can imagine how incredible it was after all that waiting, he was finally holding the baby Jesus in his arms, knowing that this tiny, helpless baby would be the person that would bring salvation to his people. And Simeon had been doing all that waiting, and yet, because he was holding a baby, he probably knew that this wasn't going to happen in his lifetime, that Jesus would have to grow up first. Then there was another person, a woman called Anna, who had been a widow after just seven years of marriage, and she was then 84, and uh, they married young in those days as well, so she must have been alone for a long time. But she spent all that time uh, when she wasn't married, just praying and fasting and worshipping God and seeking God, and she too got to meet the baby Jesus. She spoke over him through the power of the Holy Spirit, what he would go on to do, but again, knowing that it was almost certain this wouldn't happen in her lifetime. So they were waiting for this Messiah to come, for someone who would come and save their people, but at the same time they knew it wouldn't happen in their lifetime, and yet it was enough for them, it was enough to know that this was coming for their future generations. So what do you feel you're waiting for at the moment? Well, why don't you grab a piece of paper or maybe the notes on your phone and just you know think about what are the things that you're waiting for? Is it something big? Is it something small? Uh, why don't you pause the video and have a go at writing those things down? So what did you write down? Maybe it was something small, like waiting for an Amazon delivery or just waiting for me to stop talking. Uh, maybe it was something bigger, like waiting to go back to work or school again, or just waiting for this pandemic to be over. Or maybe it was even bigger. Maybe it's more life stuff, like maybe you're waiting for God to give you some direction in life. Maybe waiting to find out what your purpose is in life. Maybe God has revealed things to you before and you feel that he's promised things to you and you're waiting on those things to come to fruition. And God promises things not just to us individually, but for everybody. So there's things like he tells us that if we seek him, we will find him. That If we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. If we believe in him, we will be saved. So if you feel like you're waiting on God, you have a choice. You can be like the person that sits to watch paint dry, or you could go and do something. The people in the passage today were waiting with hope. They knew what God had promised them. They believed that he would fulfill his promise, and so they put themselves in a position to receive that. Simeon was listening to the Holy Spirit. He didn't refuse to move from his home and just wait for God to fulfill the promise. And Anna as well would pray and fast and worship daily. She was seeking God. So both of them were positioning themselves in a place ready to receive that promise. So for us, this current season doesn't have to go to waste. It doesn't have to be something that we look back at and just think was a useless time. But I believe this season is a time where we can really look at ourselves and our relationship with God and we can ask what needs to change? What am I lacking? Where have I maybe fallen away from God or got distracted? Where are things not right in my life? Maybe it's time for you to rediscover something with God, to pick up your Bible again. Maybe it's time to put on those worship songs or find ways of talking to God like you used to. Or maybe it's time to just find new ways of connecting with God. Sometimes we think that if we're not good at sitting and reading the Bible or praying, then we can't connect with God. But God's bigger than that. 
if you're in a place where you say, actually, yeah, I do want to connect with God more, but you don't know how you can do that, then that's something we can do together. We've all been in places where we think we're not connecting with God. We've all been in places where we feel distant from him. And we can all learn together ways that we can do that. We know that God's for everyone, that he wants to be at work in our lives. And we know that he doesn't want to hold back from us. But there's not much point waiting to hear from God if we're sitting there with our fingers in our ears. I know I'm guilty of that myself at times, that I'm wondering why isn't God acting? Why isn't God fulfilling this? And I realise that I'm not really doing anything about it. I'm not seeking him. I haven't positioned my pla- myself in a place to receive what he has for me. I'm doing the equivalent of just waiting and watching paint dry. So right now is a time when there's so much uncertainty in our lives. But when things are uncertain, there's only one thing we can do, really, and that's cling to what is certain. And the one thing that is certain is God's promises and God's promises never fail. So don't let this time go to waste. Let 2021 be the year that you can say that you're closer to God than you've ever been before. Let it be the year that you can say that when the world stopped and when everything was quiet, it was the perfect time to learn to listen to God more. It was the perfect time to learn to hear his voice better. So let it be a year of change and transformation where what God has been developing in you for a long time comes to fruition.